Hi everyone, Renee here, and today we're going to talk all about retinoids. What are they exactly? What do they do? Why do we need them? Do we need them? And what's available out there that might be more suitable for your particular skin condition? My retinoid journey started about two years ago, and I do have a blog post about when it all kind of began, which I will link down below. My approach and my choices have a lot to do with the fact that my skin is quite sensitive and reactive, particularly to strong actives. You know so retinoids are vitamin A and it has a whole bunch of benefits, one of them being that it helps your skin turn over faster. This stimulates collagen, which in turn creates dermal thickening, which is great for like fine lines, wrinkles, and skin elasticity. Funny, yesterday I was having a conversation with someone who is dead set against any kind of retinoids and she said it's because it thins out your skin. That's a misconception that needs to kind of go away. It's only the topmost layer of your skin, the stratum corneum, that is affected by exfoliation. A lot of those cells need to come off. They're dead, they're piling up and causing things like KP, milia, closed comedones. But the epidermis is what gets stronger and plumper, and that's what we want. The turnover is also what helps a lot with acne. Um, this has an effect also on hyperpigmentation and reversing sun damage. But also when it comes to the appearance of pores, I find that um, retinoids are particularly effective at just diminishing that. Um, the downside is that it can cause irritation, which is not something you want to be going through on any sort of long-term extended period of time. And if you're someone like me who is prone to rosacea or a lot of redness, then this can really exacerbate that in a big way. Um, so you have to be particularly careful about how you use this ingredient. And we are going to talk about ways in which you can minimize all these side effects without compromising um, the effectiveness of the ingredient and so that you can use it to best effect. So retinoic acid is the gold standard. It is by prescription only and it includes tretinoin, retin-A, um, Renova. So this is the most active form of vitamin A. It is what our skin recognizes immediately. This was originally developed as acne medication, but through a period of testing, they came to realize that this had a really interesting impact on lessening signs of aging, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation. This ingredient is very strong, can be very irritating. Like I said, at 0.025%, I experienced a lot of irritation. And by the way, not everyone is going to have the experience. I had some of you may not feel any side effects, but that doesn't mean that it is not working. I mean, as powerful and invasive as this is, you know, it's still going to take time to see results. You have to be so patient when it comes to age related results. You'll probably see something after six months of regular use. Um, when it comes to acne, however, you'll probably see faster results. There are also the newer generation synthetic retinoids, which are also like prescription only, except for Differin, which is now available OTC in drugstores. Differin being the most popular and easily accessible one, um, uses Adapalene, but there's also Tazarotene. These are meant to be easier on the skin, but as far as I'm concerned, they're still irritating. It doesn't matter if it's supposed to be gentler. The adjustment period for me with Adapalene is similar to being on Tret, so whatever. This is last year, I was able to use Tretinoin again. I had prepped my skin very well, and that journey I will absolutely be sharing with you because it is really important. Um, but I really previously thought that um, my skin was intolerant to it. The only way I was open to it again after seeing what Obagi 0.025 did to my face was because Curology um, could give it to me at 0.012% which I didn't even think was obtainable because I was always told that 0 0.025 is, is the lowest. So if you're not already familiar with Curology, they are an online website that um, provides customized skincare with prescription ingredients. They are marketed more towards treating acne, but at the end of the day, tretinoin, retinoic acid, uh, that is also an age defensive ingredient. So they give you options to customize your formulation according to whatever it is that your skin needs. For for me, it was great to be able to get 0.012% tretinoin, but you can choose two additional, like each formulation, you can choose a total of three different active ingredients. So I also got 5% um, azelaic acid and 4% niacinamide. You know, you'll have a medical provider that is sort of 
assigned to you in case you know you have any questions and who will talk you through the process. This was a much better, relatively more tolerable experience for me. Um, not to say that I didn't have downtime, but it was not in the kind of unsightly way um, with scales all over my face that I've uh, that I've had in previous experiences. But there was one moment where I got very cavalier and I used this around my eye area. Big mistake. So non-prescription retinols are not as directly active as retinoic acid. They require some conversion in your skin into retinoic acid. So they're not as strong, um, but that doesn't mean they're not effective. When it comes to actives, more concentrated is not always better. It really depends on your skin. A lot of times when you use anything that's too strong or too much for your skin, it will cause damage. It's far better to use something less concentrated that's more suitable for your skin so you can use it consistently and thereby get better results. Rather than putting yourself through the cycle of like damaging your skin, then having to repair it. So let's talk about retinaldehyde because to me it is just one of the most un underrated retinoids and it's what I'm using now and I'm just loving it. As far as non-prescription retinoids go, this is one of the most powerful because it only requires one conversion step in the skin to retinoic acid. So this is effective in the same ways as retinoic acid and how it impacts wrinkles, photoaging, and acne. Um, this is more powerful than retinol, but what makes this pure magic to me is the ease of use. There is so little irritation, erythema, you know, dryness. It is perfect for sensitive and reactive skin types, but it still delivers results. For very sensitive skin types, I won't say that there's absolutely zero irritation. Um, even after a few months, when I use this a few days in a row, there will be a day where I might experience a little bit of sensitivity, especially if I'm traveling or I'm in a particularly um, harsh climate, but it's more akin to like slightly overdoing it with the acids, you know, as opposed to like dermatitis. I suspect the reason why you don't see retinaldehyde everywhere is because it is a very expensive ingredient um, to formulate with. So what I've been using for the last few months and absolutely just loving right now are these vitamin A serums from Osmosis. This is a brand I really trust and I think that is so important when you are choosing retinoid products. I was at a point where I had to decide whether or not I should maybe possibly level up with the tretinoin or try something new. And honestly, I just, I always want to try something new. New. So I've been using the Calm, which is the gentlest one that they have available. This uses 0.04% retinaldehyde, and the formula of this is just, it's just so beautiful. It is really hydrating, and it's just really nourishing. The, exactly the kind of serum feel texture that I love, that sort of heavily hydrating texture. Even without the retinol in here, I would still probably just love using this serum. It is great for sensitive skin. In fact, last night I didn't even use moisturizer and I still woke up with like really nice moisturized skin. So I started using this after a couple months off of using any other retinoid. Um, so I wanted to start conservatively, um, but I'm ready to, I've got this lined up already. This is the next step higher and next step stronger. Um, this is a 0.7 percent retinaldehyde and I'm yeah I'm ready to try this as soon as this is finished. I've also started incorporating this one from a then retronol. Um, this is a 0.5 percent once a week so I will use this um, all the other days and then once a week I will use this just to see um, how my skin reacts to it before I go to the 0.7 percent. You know so far so good I will say that texturally though this is a little bit more of like a lightweight creamy uh, gel texture. Definitely. Retinol is definitely the most common OTC retinoid. This requires two conversions in the skin to retinoic acid. So it goes from retinol and it converts to retinaldehyde and then it converts to retinoic acid. So tretinoin is meant to be about 20 times more powerful than retinol. And that's not to say that retinol is either weak or ineffective. It is still effective and it is still pretty strong. It's really interesting to me sometimes when I hear people talk about retinols as being just so tolerable and gentle and weak. I mean, someone should tell my face that. With a 0.5% retinol, my skin 
skin still goes through an adjustment process. And I take the same measures whether I'm using retinol or tretinoin. But I do feel that there are some retinol formulation and products out there that are really good at um, simultaneously, you know, calming your skin down and soothing it and buffering the strong effects that retinol might have. Well, there are more side effects that are similar to using tretinoin than I get when I use retinaldehyde where, you know, I barely get any side effects at all. So I'm going to be really boring and just say that when it comes to the retinols that I've used and really like, um, they really are so specific for my own skin and I have never felt the need to use anything above 0.5%. 1% 0.5%. Um, is just too much for my skin at this point, so I am not really in a hurry to try out products like this. I can only speak to its texture, which is, you know, really kind of nice and creamy and, and interesting, but, um, you know, I don't want to necessarily put it on my face and experience any kind of um, issues. Things are going really good right now. Me, rather than use um, a 1% retinol formula, I would rather go straight to a 0.012% tretinoin. I actually feel like this was a gentler experience, a more tolerable experience than using a 1% um, retinol. The one product that's 1% retinol that I did enjoy using is actually um, a booster. It's Paula's Choice 1% retinol booster. And what I really liked about this is I never used it in its full strength and just like applied it on my straight to my face after cleansing. I, I suspect that would be just really, really strong. But this, the texture of this mixes so well with moisturizers and other kind of serums. And I think that's what I love. I actually use this with a moisturizer and that was just perfect. It gave me a really nice um, sort of buffered time release um, retinol impact. The first retinol products that I used in my journey are from The Ordinary. It's retinol in squalane oil. Retinol in oil is not for everyone, but for me, whose skin loves oil so much, this is just like perfect. It's the first time I ever used a retinol in an oil Base. So I started at 0.2% retinol um, in squalane from The Ordinary, which is a perfect starting point. Um, but for all its benefits, squalane oil is just not my favorite texturally because I just find it sort of greasy. I feel like it never really quite sinks in. It kind of just stays on top of the skin in a, in a greasy, uncomfortable way. Um, so I actually discovered this one from Jordan Samuels. Oil in retinol is also 0.2% retinol, except for the oil blend is just so beautiful. It's just more my speed. Um, it's a mixture of, you know, sunflower seed oil, marula. I mean, it's just got all the it's just a beautiful oil blend. So what the 0.2% did for me was sort of superficial, but it gave me that sort of immediate, really nice, glowy looking skin. The resurfacing is, you know, minor, um, but just enough to maintain this sort of like tautness. And, you know, it was just, it's just sort of the immediate effect of that was really, really nice. Once I went up to the 0.5 in oil, then I started getting more of like the dryness, um, you know, more flaking, more dullness. I still feel like the 0.5% um, in squalane is a much gentler 0.5%. It's, it's a gentler format. I didn't get as a much irritation or um, adjustment period as I did from, like, let's just say SkinCeuticals 0.5%. Um, however, I find SkinCeuticals 0.3% to be the sweet spot for me. I really love the 0.3% and I feel this is something that I can use long term. I'm definitely going to continue this conversation to talk more about usage and when you may feel like you need, you know, whatever you're using is not doing enough when you need to sort of level up when it comes to retinols or tretinoin and when maybe you should just level down. It really is a journey about finding what works best for you, what type of product, what percentage, um, how it works best in your routine. Um, but it's always, in the discovery process, it's always better to start out conservatively and with less. Um, so, you know, this is not going to be this broad review of all the retinol products because I just can't do that to my face. Now onto the more fringy sort of new age retinoids. Of course, we have to talk about the most popular one, 
being hydroxypenicolone retinoate. That's what was introduced in Sunday Riley's Luna Oil. Um, the first time I truly, truly enjoyed it was in The Ordinary's Advanced Retinoid. My personal favorite oil format ones would be um, Pestle & Mortar Superstar or um, this one from Votary, which is their Intense Night Oil, and this is combined with retin um, Rosehip Oil. It's really beautiful. But I really do love the Grand Active Retinoid in Emulsion um, because, again, it, it has to do with that beautiful hydrating serum texture. It's just so lightweight. It's it's really, really nice. It improves texture, you know, brightness. Something definitely feels, my skin feels good. I think the question ultimately is um, about the long-term effects and whether or not that can be comparable to using a retinol or retinoic acid. This is an ester of retinoic acid, which means in theory it's supposed to convert directly into retinoic acid. Um, however, I just am not convinced after using this for like eight, over eight months, I would say, um, ever since my first ordinary review, I've been using um, hydroxypenicolone retinoate in, in various forms. I can't say that's given me the same kind of results I would get after using a retinol for six months. But whether or not it can be comparable to um, a retinol, retinaldehyde, or retinoic acid, that really remains to be seen. I would imagine that it would probably take years and years of use to get to a point where you might even be able to see any kind of, um, or those kind of results, um, the age defensive results, the photo aging reversing. There are formulations out there similar to um, the Ordinary's Grand Active Retinoid Emulsion, um, which combine HPR with retinol. And I think those are actually more effective. When I started on retinols again, I was sort of incorporating it or introducing it into my routine while I was still using HPR products. And I have to say that I loved what it did for my skin at that time when um, I had both of them together. I was told that the proper pronunciation is bakuchiol. I've been calling it bakuchiol all this time. So this is a really interesting ingredient that is sort of popped up. The first time I saw it was last year in this Biosance serum. So is bakuchiol in any way a retinoid or a retinol that can be classified in that same sort of family? Um, not really. Research has shown that there are some overlapping effects like, you know, has an impact on lines and wrinkling, some age defensive um, properties. It's an ingredient that does have skin benefits, but it's not a retinoid. Using a serum with bakuchiol in it, it, it's again, you just have to trust that it is doing something beneficial in the long term for your skin, um, whether or not that can be comparable to um, a retinoid is is not something I have experienced yet. Ser there are a lot of brands that have retinol serums that don't contain any retinol, but it contains bakuchiol. So, you know, you're clearly not going to get any irritation. Your skin is not going to need any retinizing. There's no adjustment period while you're using that. Um, but you're also not necessarily going to get the same benefits of a retinol. So you do have to sort of look out for that. I mean, it's not to say you're not going to get any benefits at all, but you're not using a retinol. So this is the first part of a retinoid series I'm doing. There's still so much important stuff to talk about, like how to start using Using it, how to apply it, and if you haven't start yet, how to prepare your skin for when you do. And if you already are using it, um, how to know if you need to maybe, you know, go up a step or, you know, how to determine what kind of strength you need. But also something that's helped me are what are really complementary products or ingredients to use while you're using retinol. A lot of you are so confused about and always asking me about what other actives you can and cannot use while you're using retinols. So we're going to just talk about all of that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.